The reality is for a business like us, we're a resource-based business. We, we, we rely on the land resource uh, to make our business work, so we need to look after it. The generation that's hit NAPCO now stand on the shoulders of giants because we, this stuff's been going on for 145 years. But what's different is that we've recognised the need to have a social licence to operate a business like we've got where we use a large part of the, the natural resources of this country to produce uh, what we produce. Protected wildlife areas and, and those sort of things are, are just a part of our business. We're in a position now where what we're doing will be recognised. It'll be recognised in the marketplace and it'll be recognised by the decision makers around the industry for sustainability and governance. We've got a reporting framework that we go to the board with. We've got standards that we set within the business uh, to report on a wide range of things that we do. And that sustainability framework covers a broad spectrum of the things we do, like our animal welfare uh, programs, the way we treat our people, the way we engage with the public. We support local community events. Uh, we, we're a very big supporter of the Flying Doctor. They range widely from animal and plant species that need protecting right through to you know, industry best practice in safety and as well as from a strategic point of view. We're also looking at what are the commercial aspects of, of things like carbon credits and uh, biodiversity credits, those sort of things that we're, we're building into our business so that in my thinking about NAPCO is that we're here to be in business for another 100 years. So we need to be aware of what the long-term future looks like and, and we need to spread that business risk base because for a business like us where we can diversify, based on the, the resources we've got, it'll give us a much broader opportunity to go into the future. One of the reasons we started the Five Founders program was to take what we felt was a good quality product to market closer to the consumer. One of the other strategic reasons for doing the Five Founders was to mitigate our risk against cattle price. So when cattle prices go up and down, as they do quite frequently, we've got a more stable price in the meat price, which means that uh, when cattle prices fall, we have a level of mitigation against that reduction in revenue. Probably 20 to 30% of our production going through the brand, with the balance of that going through cattle sales. Our activities that we're doing across our portfolios We've registered for a soil carbon project and we continue to convert from traditional power to renewable power as we've done at Glen Ormiston and looking across other properties. Planted about 2,000 plus hectares of desmanthus across some of our properties and we continue to plant more. That has the benefit of sequestering more carbon and, and nitrogen into the soil but also provides a different and sometimes more effective feed source so animals can get to weight quicker. And what we are also doing is uh, we have partnered with uh, Royal DSM and we'll be looking to feed our cattle bovaire in the very near future in our feedlot, but also we're doing trial work with various organisations to try and get it into our backgrounding and eventually breeding blocks, which is where the large gains can be made. One program that we continue to work on is our genetic program in being able to um, effectively create an animal that's heavier at a younger age. We can get our animals through to market and therefore the intensity of their methane per kilo produced is much less. So that's, that's one program we continue to work on, um, as well as these new and emerging technologies as we've talked about. I think the carbon storage equation is still yet to be verified in its entirety. We own large tracts of land, so it would be foolish of us to not consider sequestering more carbon into the soil. We are relying on using offsets to reduce our carbon footprint right now, but we have high ambitions to remove the need to buy any, any credits um, and use the credits we generate across our properties. We are doing some steps in creating our baseline on a couple of our properties and understanding how we can sequester more carbon into the soil. This country is very delicate. You can't overstock it and you can't overgraze it. So you've got to be extremely careful with what you do with that. Everything we've done and the, um, the plan that we had for this place has sort of been unfolding fairly rapidly. Big economic things that we've done are, are things like our farm bot monitoring water systems, our solar has been a huge thing. Um, not only is it a, a good thing for the environment what we've done, but it's um, reducing our diesel usage and it has a very big economic um, effect on what we do as well. We've always gone out to spell country. I think with the infrastructure we've put in with more waters, more fences, 
um, laneways, things like that. It's made a management tool um, extremely easy for us to um, obviously manage land a lot better. Um, we can get paddocks ready, sort of rain ready, so um, instead of overgrazed with um, certain areas that haven't been grazed in the past, we can now graze because of more waters, more infrastructure, obviously. And in the long run, I think it's um, it sort of works for a better product um, for our five founders. I think it is too soon to see that because we are yet to properly instigate some of these new technologies and, and processes. But ultimately, what we will need to see is we either have an increase or, or a main maintenance of productivity, i.e. we can't afford to see a reduction in productivity because at the end of the day, we are a cattle company that effectively um, produces cattle and produces beef and we've got to be very cost efficient in how we do that. We've had the luxury of being around for a long period of time and we've been able to provide uh, or be a very consistent cattle producer to our main customers. Um, so we felt that it was a good opportunity to try something a bit different and for the reasons I talked about before including price mitigation, we went into the, into the branded beef proposition. The luxury of providing cattle on a consistent basis to a number of suppliers, so we knew that we could do it. Then it was a matter of understanding what our strong attributes were. So I wouldn't say branded products for everyone. I certainly wouldn't say that. I would say play to your strengths, be strong in your decisions. Um, it's taken us three and a half years to see the worm turn on our branded program, but we've stood the strength of time and we're starting to see the right results now.